All right, guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're here to talk about the 12 new features that just got announced at WWDC for the Apple Vision Pro. This is part of their 26 update. Yes, you heard that correctly, 26, because they have now changed it from calling Vision Pro OS 1 or 2, and they immediately jumped to 26 because now their whole entire line for iOS, for macOS and all that stuff is all following a yearly cadence for everything being called update 26. So for the Apple Vision Pro, they've actually got a lot of cool stuff announced for this. Two of the most requested features that I had right off the bat are actually a part of this update. One of the two, the two things that I wanted the most when Vision Pro came out are part of this update. And I actually already have it installed because the beta is available already. So we're going to talk about some of the stuff and some of the stuff I'll be able to show you already to give you guys a look on how cool some of this stuff really is for the Apple Vision Pro. Yes, I still have mine. Yes, I still use mine, use mine almost every single week. When it comes to watching movies and stuff, I did not get rid of mine like a lot of the other YouTubers did when they did a review and bounced right off of it. It is still here, still being used, and I'm really excited to talk to you guys about it. Let's go ahead and get into the video. Gaming tech, eating brekkies, the gaming tech, going for a brekkies, the gaming tech, gaming tech, is the gaming tech, gaming tech. So one of the first things that they showed off with the Apple Vision Pro that really was exciting for a lot of people. Now, granted, I have currently an Android. I do hop back and forth when it comes to phones. Some years I'm on Android, some years I'm on iPhone. Right now I'm on an Android. So for me, I can't really show you this specific feature right now, but everyone knows what it is. It is when you're in the Apple Vision Pro, you can use the Apple Vision Pro to unlock your phone. So before, when I used to have my Apple Vision Pro in my head and I used to have an iPhone back in the day, um, I would look at my phone and I would still have to unlock it with, and I obviously couldn't unlock it with Face ID because obviously my face had an Apple Vision Pro on. Well, now the Apple Vision Pro, when it's near you, will just unlock your phone. That's a huge usability thing that a lot of people wanted, and it is here now. You can also answer calls on the Apple Vision Pro from your phone as well. So if your phone starts ringing next to you, you'll see the call pop up on your Apple Vision Pro, and you can answer it and take that call right from there. So that comes in at number 12. Coming in at number 11, which is a pretty cool feature that not anybody asked for, but it's still pretty cool and nonetheless that does work right now is when you're in Safari you can actually just scroll with your eyes you don't have to use this motion anymore to scroll as you guys are looking here you could just look at the bottom tab of the browser and you can see it instantly starts to scroll as you look at it which is pretty cool and futuristic is it something that you need to have or use no because I still think flicking your hands and, and flicking your fingers up is really intuitive and really quick and still gives you more control but as far as futuristic and just making it that much more into like you know, being a futuristic kind of feature, it is really cool to just look at the tab, not having to lift a finger and just have it scroll and then look down and look again at the middle of it and then having it stopping to scroll. So not something anybody asked for and had on their big card, but it's still a really fun feature to use. The next one here coming in at number 10 is 90 hertz native tracking for hand tracking. This is a pretty big deal. When the Apple Vision Pro first came out with the version one, they had 30 hertz hand tracking, which made playing games not great like synth riders and stuff that they have on here because it couldn't keep up with your hand tracking movements then they went to 90 hertz uh but it wasn't native to the os uh, developers had to opt into it and stuff like that and it wasn't baked in like you know native across the board now with apple vision uh you know 26 now this is natively at the bottom of the framework here so now it has native 90 hertz tracking so it's going to improve hand tracking across the board for everything whether developers opt in into it or not which is obviously awesome and how it should have been from day one but it's really going to help these hand tracking games and apps and stuff like that work that much better. The next one here coming in at number nine is the new Logic Muse spatial pen that you guys are seeing here. Obviously the idea of this is you're gonna be able to use it in spatial so you could be able to use it in drawing applications. You're gonna be able to use it in applications that are work related where you can go ahead and circle like presentations and stuff like that in the air. Really have a tactile feel because I know Apple obviously started off with the Vision Pro making it seem like everything can be done with just your eyes and your hands and you don't need anything else, but tactile experiences like controllers and things like this, like a stylus, really does go a long way to give you like that feeling of actually being able to do something and drawing will be a lot better with a stylus like this and doing presentations will be a lot better than this. So this is a really cool, you know, third party controller that's coming to the OS and I'm glad that Apple is opening up the third party developers to let them create their own hardware for the Apple Vision Pro. The next one here coming in at number eight, it was a highly requested feature that a lot of people wanted when the Apple Vision Pro came out. 
very simple thing, which is creating folders. Yes, before you only had one native folder in the beginning of the Apple Vision Pro, as you're seeing here, which is all your apps where they live that were not native Apple Vision Pro apps. You couldn't create folders for anything else. Now you can finally create folders. You can organize things into games folders, into productivity folders, into navigation, into you know whatever you want your folders to be, just like you could on the iPad and on the iPhone. Now you can do that on here as well. Number seven is also a really big deal here, and this is native support for 180 and 360 videos, and they're partnering with Canon, with Instagram 360 and GoPro, so you can use those native cameras like the Insta360 to take those 360 videos and then natively watch it on the Apple Vision Pro. This is a huge deal because we all know, I love taking 360 videos and stuff like that, but it was really hard to get that stuff working on other headsets and stuff like that. The fact that Apple is finally natively supporting that and is not just making it like a thing where like, oh, you can only watch spatial videos in the format that we're using and we're gonna make it a pain in the ass for you to use your own spatial formats and, and the one that you know the industry has adopted. Thank God that's not the case. Yes, Apple's spatial content is the best in the business as far as quality, but you know, getting our hands uh, on those cameras and stuff like that for consumers is kind of out of spec right now. So the fact that we can use things like the Insta360 and GoPro and stuff and use that content natively on the Apple Vision Pro is awesome for us consumers. The next one here coming in at number six is spatial browsing. Yes, this is where the web finally starts taking shape into how you can feel like you may be starting to browse in the future as more and more websites get adapted to this. The idea of this is that Two things, when, you're, when you have your browser open, now websites can actually put native objects in there that are spatial objects that you can see as you're scrolling through the, uh, you know, the browser and stuff like that while you're navigating through that web page. And you can even pull it out of the web page and put it in front of you and put it on your floor and stuff and see that object right in front of you, which is obviously super cool. But then on top of that, while you're surfing through, you can do like spatial browsing where it kind of encompasses your view. And you can be spatially browsing and while you're flipping through the web page, you know, developers who are making these websites and stuff can actually make the web pages and the pictures and the videos that are on there take shape into spatial viewing elements. So you can actually see while you're navigating your head back and forth that you're in like a spatial scene while you're looking at this picture and feel like you're actually a part of that picture or being a part of that video. Really, really cool stuff that they're showing off here. And I'm excited to see more websites take advantage of this as time goes on. But this is definitely the start of the spatial browsing era that we have here going on. The next one here coming in at number five is another highly requested feature. This is local shared experiences. So obviously this is not something I'm gonna be able to test and I don't have two Vision Pros here. I was lucky enough to get one to, and or nor do I know any one of my friends that have one either. But if you do happen to have two in the same household or two in the same area, you can now do that content like you're aware, like co-location, if you guys are familiar on the Quest, that's what they call it over there, co-location multiplayer where you can play games and you can be in the same room and actually see the exact same objects in front of you or watch the same video content and stuff like that. That's the exact same thing that Apple is now enabling. So it's not just, you know, you have to get on a FaceTime call and like watch the same share play stuff. It's using the same share play technology, but now for co-location as well. So you could be in the same room, watching the same content and be on the same couch and stuff like that, which is obviously for families who are lucky enough to have two of these now, you know, being able to watch 3D movies together, being able to play games that are going to support this in the future, obviously makes it a lot more social. So you don't feel secluded while you're watching movies and stuff where it was before and much more like one person device kind of thing. If you're lucky enough to have two, now you can do it socially in your house. So really, really cool. We'll see what apps and games take advantage of this in the future, but really cool that Apple is adding this and definitely something that a lot of us have asked for. The next one here coming in at number four is something called spatial scenes. I think a lot of us remember here when we went into the photos library before, we used to be able to convert as of, I think, uh, uh, Vision OS 2.5 or 2, uh, where you were able to go into any 2D picture that you had and convert it into a spatial picture where you can actually see it, like have some 3D depth. Well, this takes it a step further. And now thanks to the power of AI and Apple intelligence st and stuff, they're making this even better. So now when you convert these images and stuff, they're gonna have even more 3D depth. It's gonna feel like you're a part of the scene. And me as somebody who's looking at this right now, it's really cool to, you know, 2D spatial pictures and spatial video and stuff really is the future of medium when it comes to looking at this stuff in VR. And, you know, Apple, continuing to develop this even further and making 2D pictures even better is an awesome experience and I can't wait to see more of that. And they're gonna have even more of this content with their 3D spatial 
app that they have now where you can see some of this content even if you're not taking it yourself. This was introduced back in iOS 2.5 where you now have an app that you can see this stuff and this is going to be supported in that app as well where people are going to be taking this spatial content. Number three here is a pretty big feature which is the new Personas update and this thing took a drastic turn. Personas was something that some people laughed at and stuff because they didn't think it was as good as they wanted it to be even though I thought it was much better than anything we've seen before. This has now gotten even better. Check out my persona right now. It looks even more realistic than it ever has before. And this is just one take. I didn't even have perfect lighting in my situation. I was just under a kitchen light bulb when I did this. And it is so much better. The detail on my face, the detail on your eyebrows and just your complexion of your face. It really looks like it's me now. Like when I make calls and stuff like that, when I made a FaceTime call, people were like, holy shit, that really does look like you. Spatial personas are really getting a gigantic facelift on here. And uh, wow, they really did improve this. This is getting <laughs> this is getting crazy and how good they're able to make your spatial personas look. I did not expect a jump in quality as big as we got from here to the last version, but hey, we did. And this is fantastic because now when you make spatial calls and stuff, you're going to look a lot more like yourself and it's not going to be as jarring to people who see you on these calls or see you in video calls. This is super, super awesome. The second one here uh, is a really big deal that a lot of us clamored for, including me, myself, when the Apple Vision Pro came out which is controller support. The PlayStation VR 2 controllers are coming to the Apple Vision Pro. Freaking awesome. They technically already work right now, but obviously there's no games to use it with anything. All you can do right now is like use it to navigate the menu. But holy crap, you can now pair it via Bluetooth if you have the VR2 controllers. And holy crap, I can't wait to see games. Finally, take advantage of this. It's going to be sixed off tracks. It's going to have support for these controllers. And now games are finally going to be able to be ported over, or at least more games be ported over from developers to the Apple Vision Pro. Because obviously before, you know, we know that hand tracking is not everything. You can't just use hand tracking for games. Things like 11 Table Tennis and Pickleball, which Pickleball is the first game that's actually been announced from Resolution Games to be able to support these VR2 controllers from PlayStation. So can't wait to try that. And I'll be doing a review on that as soon as that comes out. And uh, yeah, it's just awesome. I mean, like I said, uh, hand tracking works pretty well now on the Apple Vision Pro, but it's never going to be a replacement for controllers. It's never going to be a replacement for, hand, for you know, having something physical in your hand for games that just need it. And hand tracking is never going to be as good as six off tracking like you do with the controllers. I think that's shown us and I'm glad Apple finally got on board. I am a little surprised that they partnered with Sony and didn't make their own controllers and sell it, but even better for me because I already had those controllers. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited to see what games come out with in the future. But now we know that we actually can get games because developers now don't have to reinvent the whole entire game and wheel that they did for other headsets that have always been using controllers from day one. So awesome to see. I love hand tracking. I love my, using my hands and stuff on the Apple Vision Pro if it's future futuristic. But we need to have both options for different use cases that we use the headset for. So happy it's here. And the number one thing that we got to talk about on this list for sure is widgets and widgets is a huge new addition here coming in at number one for the Apple Vision Pro. Not even just widgets, but the fact that you can take any of your windows and place them on your wall. So as you guys are seeing here, I can take anything I want and put it all over my room and put it in multiple rooms around my house and they will stay persistent in that location even after you reboot your headset. This was the number one requested feature that people wanted on the headset. Uh, that we didn't have before and now you can place all these windows all over your house all over these different rooms i can put a clock widget over here on the corner i can put, put a music widget over here uh, all of these different things all around my room and finally be able to see them persistently and every time i put my headset on whether it's off or on or i just boot it up they will instantly go back to where i put them if my clock was on the living room wall and a music widget was in my, uh, you know, my board game room and I'm walking around the house, all those stuff will stay persistent. If I want to put a Safari browser in my kitchen with a pulled up recipe that I want to see every time I cook and every time I put my headset on, I can do that now. Uh, this is awesome. All of these different widgets and developers are going to be able to create their own widgets as well, which is going to be obviously awesome. So man, I'm super excited to see what developers do with widgets and I'm super happy that, you know, you can pin any of the apps that you have on your on your Vision OS right now, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, or whatever, and you can pin it to any wall that you want to, and it's always going to stay persistent through all reboots and everything. This is super awesome, something that I've wanted from day one. So guys, those are my top 12 features that are coming to the Apple Vision Pro. I will leave you with one more bonus one, which is the new Jupiter environment. I love environments on the Apple Vision Pro. I feel like they take so long to get out, though. I wish they would make more, and we got a couple, like two or three during this release, but we're only getting one. But it does look fantastic. It's not part of the OS update yet, so no one has seen it. Only these video highlights that you guys are looking at here. 
Uh, so I'm excited to see when that gets added into the beta. But obviously I love Apple environments and this one seems to have multiple stages that you can actually flip through depending on the time of day and stuff. So super cool to get into that. So those are my top 12 features on the Apple Vision Pro. Can't wait to dive into this as future betas go on and I will keep you guys updated once this fully releases and PlayStation VR 2 gets con uh, support from games and stuff like that. Really exciting release. The only other thing that I wanted that we didn't get today that I talked about on my original review was the whole persistent with the widgets and everything that I just talked about as my number one. The only cool thing that they would be left to add is that you, if you can save all of those widgets to a profile, say a work environment, and it saves all your widgets for your work environment that are in that exact location, and then I can swap to another profile, which is my game profile or my home profile, and all those widgets close, and then the widgets that I want for my game environment all open up into the locations that they should be. That'd be the only thing that I would want to push that thing further, but the fact that now widgets and stuff stay in place is a really good and huge step up to where it was before. So let me know your favorite feature out of all the updates that we got for the Apple Vision Pro that you guys saw announced. Let me know in those comments down below if you guys have a Vision Pro and if you guys have still been enjoying yours. I've been enjoying mine. Watching 3D movies and watching Apple Vision Pro movies and, and stuff like that is and spatial content is what I do the most on it. It's my media watching device for sure. But let me know what you guys are doing with it. I can't wait to see what games come out with the controllers next. Thank you guys for watching. Till next time.